always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
in order to face them. Nothing's going to go away. But we need to be able to say no in order to say yes to God. Jeremiah, as many prophets, had to keep looking over his shoulder for people trying to get him. And he knew that being a prophet, he had to speak out against a lot of what was happening in his world. And people didn't like that. And so they wanted to shut him up. They wanted to go after him. And Jeremiah struggled with that for a while. Probably all his life. But he kept coming back to the understanding that God gives him hope and courage. The darkness that he was feeling is not overcome except by the light of God. So he kept speaking out. He had to. He had to. Same with Jesus. He had to keep looking over his shoulder. People wanted to shut him up. And they thought they did for a while. But the gift of God in resurrection, the Holy Spirit, that's given to us as it was to Jesus, overcame that darkness. And it was symbolized in the scriptures that when he died, Three o'clock, everything turned dark, pitch dark. That darkness didn't last. It's not to deny that darkness for a while. There's times we find ourselves in that dark, not sure what to do, what to say, fearing everything. But we need to calm ourselves down, turn back to Christ, and ask for the courage, the wisdom, to listen in that darkness, to proclaim from the rooftops in the light. One aspect of being a prophet we sometimes overlook is the fact that they need, the prophet needs to give good alternatives. If, you, if you're claiming that something is not right, is evil in the world, okay, that's one thing, but so what? How do we get people hope to overcome whatever that may be? When we ask the question, hopefully at some point, does it have to be that way? Isn't there another alternative? When we fear listening to the answer to that, then we're not being prophetic. Say, but I'm not a prophet. Maybe not like Jeremiah or any of those others, but we're prophetic in who we are, created and gifted in our baptism. We each know there's times when we come across something that's bad, evil, wrong, sinful, whatever that might be, and we need to react to it. To not react is sitting on the sidelines. Jesus commissioned his disciples to go out and do something, to be Christ in the world. He wasn't sugarcoating it. He laid it out. This is what's going to happen to you. You saw it in my life. But he gave him the tools, the understanding, to be able to share that hopefulness, that light, that faith, that grace. that will overcome those fears and those persecutions that they would suffer. And the type of persecutions that we may suffer. Most of us, not like Jesus or many of the prophets or most of the apostles, but any of us, especially when we're young, the one thing we don't want someone to do is to think we're a jerk to not like us, or maybe we don't care if they like us or not, but to really hate us and be after us for what we say who we are. But I know there's examples of youth that stand up to that. May not be happy about it, 
but they're at peace. And we find ourselves coming together with people that are hopeful, that are faithful. Maybe they don't share the faith exactly as we do or we as they do, but we share something in common. Because if we think we're all alone, we are all alone. And there's not many of us that can, come over, that can overcome that. I want to leave you with something I came across as I was preparing for this. God knows us better than we know ourselves. Loves every freckle and fiber of us. God counts us worthy to spread the word. But we can't bring Jesus. We have no control over this virus or climate. And there's a knee on our neck. No fear, you tell us. Breathe in us again. And be our nerve and our backbone. We will stand up straight and proclaim your word in a loud voice to all the people, in all the places, times, and events of our lives. We all need to cry out when we're in fear. Don't bother, don't ignore it. Cry it out and then listen. Breathe in and breathe out. Oftentimes when we cry out, there's an opposite reaction. And we're seeing it today. And understandably so. There's truth on both sides. Well, black lives matter. Well, white lives matter. Police matter. We all matter. That's all true. But we can't ignore those that are crying out a truth that many of us don't understand. We've got to look for alternatives. To look for the evil in some of what's being done by our black neighbors. Not ignore the evil of a handful of police officers. but to know that there's been churning, there's been crying out to see the light. And we have to deal with that. And it's painful because we don't get it. And there's overreaction on either side. But let's all take it to prayer. And let Christ prod us, push us, Comfort us into what to do in our own lives, in the people we come across, in the prejudices we have. It doesn't have to be for color, it can be anything. There's a light out there that we need to proclaim in a world of dark.
bountiful, we offer our petition. For the church, that we may have the confidence to pray to proclaim the good news in the house of us. Let us pray for the Lord. That all of us across this land are coming home may take the steps necessary to make the earth a livable, bountiful, and beautiful home for generations. Let us pray for the Lord. For all of our fathers and fathers who have loved and guided us throughout our lives, those who are living and those who are past, that they may always enjoy God's loving care. Let us pray for them. For the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Church's love and witness and commitment to any new system, let us pray for the Lord. For those affected with the recovery of the virus, in Jesus, divine physician, offer them hope and provide healing.
through him and with him and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thank you. 